then we shall have all the questions at the end of the presentation. As always, please ask the questions as they come um, on the chat box, we shall read them through. And in the end, uh, we shall answer the questions. We shall share the presentation to your emails once we are done. Asante Nisana. Haribu sana, Peter. Thank you, Ella. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Peter Mugo Joseph. I'm a senior account manager at Scope Markets. Basically, Scope Markets is a brokerage uh, that is allowed by CMA through regulation to actually offer investors and traders an opportunity to actually now participate in the global markets. Now, when we say global markets, simply we are looking at the major exchanges. Number one, we have, uh, let's say, the London Stock Exchange. We have New York Stock Exchange. We have the NASDAQ. There are so many other exchanges, for example, in Europe. So we are going to be taking you through how actually you can now uh, participate in those specific markets. Now, uh, basically looking at uh, scope markets, uh, we incorporated here in Kenya. We have a license through CMA, something you can actually now go online and check, maybe via CSI CMA through their website. Uh, number two, we actually recently got a derivative broker license, whereby very soon now you're going to be able to even trade the Nairobi Stock Exchange in our platform. Uh, we shall actually be showing you our platform, which is compatible with different uh, gadgets. Our offices are here in Westlands. We have an office here at our Westside Towers, fourth floor just along Luakabete Road. If you feel like you want to visit us, you can always pay us a visit. The other thing is that uh, Scope Markets, this is a platform that we use. It's a platform that um, allows you to trade in multi-assets. Now, when we say multi-assets, it's because uh, we deal in the financial markets. Now, financial market being a broad term, there are different asset classes under that specific financial market. Number one, they are what we call stocks, what you're going to be talking about today. They are what we call ETFs or exchange traded funds. There are also other different assets. I believe uh, Ella will be taking you through also some of them. Apart from that, this platform is actually compatible with either your phone, your tablet, a desktop, your laptop. And basically anywhere you are simply means you are able to carry your investment with you. The other thing is that you are able to actually execute any of your trade, provided the exchange is open, you're able to actually uh, execute a trade wherever you are. So the convenience of um, either opening or closing a trade is at the palm of your hand. Uh, and like, for example, if you look at uh, our local market, I give you an example. Uh, sometimes for you maybe to execute a trade through a broker, you will need maybe to fill in a form and then maybe the trade takes like a day or two to be executed. Now, most of those times you realize that uh, sometimes the trade might have passed. Now, with this platform, it's you're able to see the trade. When the exchange, for example, New York Stock Exchange opens, you're able to execute your trade. Wherever you are provided, you have internet. You already know the stock you want to buy or an ETF. You'll be able to execute your trade instantly. There's usually no delay. The trade usually happens uh, instant. So we are going to be sharing with you maybe some of the exchanges that uh, you can actually participate in through Scope Markets. All these are exchanges that you have an opportunity while just sitting in your house or you're maybe somewhere in a meeting or maybe somewhere out, you're able to participate through in these markets directly. So those are some of the exchanges that we have uh, assets that are tradable, either you can buy long term or short term. And basically that is the introduction bit about uh, who we are. We shall also be looking in detail how maybe uh, you can come on board. Uh, Ella is going to be taking you through some of those areas also. But basically I'll take the ball back to Ella. And then uh, if she gives me uh, an opportunity to continue, I will. Thank you so much, Peter. Yes, you can continue. Um, then we can take the questions at the end. All right, sawa sawa. Now, uh, basically, apart from these exchanges, what you're going to also uh, realize uh, is that today we are going to be tackling these two uh, specific uh, assets. They are two different assets. The trading bit of execution is usually the same. So that's no brainer when it comes to the execution bit. But what you will need to understand as an investor is basically 
how do you now choose whether to trade a stock or an ETF or an exchange traded fund? So we'll begin by looking at, for example, what a stock is. Now, when it comes to stocks, stocks are basically uh, securities that represent the ownership of a fraction of a corporation. For example, if locally here we have Safaricom and you want to be a shareholder, you can buy a stock through your broker and they'll buy it to you through Nairobi Stock Exchange. So the broker becomes the trading partner where they'll be able to buy the stock that you tell them to buy for you. So when you say you have bought a stock, in short, you have actually bought a unit of that specific company. So you are a shareholder, you own a piece. So stocks are bought and sold predominantly uh, on stock exchanges. In our local case is the NSC globally. Uh, the example I've shown you, basically we shall be sharing this specific style so you'll be able to go through them individually. And apart from that, we have now the specific uh, ETFs. So an exchange traded fund is a type of security that tracks an index or a sector. Now in short, or how we put it in simple terms, an ETF is more of a balanced portfolio traded as one. Now, there are other ETFs that usually track uh, one specific item. There are others that will track different uh, specific companies. For example, instead of you buying Safaricom, Equity Bank, and let's say KCB, you can have an ETF that tracks the prices of those specific companies. So you as an investor or a trader, you will now go and buy an ETF that combines the three S. One. So instead of having three specific trades open, now you only have one. Now, what you're going to realize about uh, most ETFs is that uh, they are well balanced. For example, we shall be looking at an example of uh, the SPY or this ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Now, S&P 500 is simply 500 large cap companies in the US, and this ETF is able to track that specific index. That means with that one ETF, you actually have a basket of 500 companies you are trading now as one. ETFs also you're going to realize they offer very low uh, expense ratio and fewer broker commission. As we shall be seeing, for example, in the client agreement, you're going to realize that it's very cheap actually for you to trade an ETF or a stock, especially in the global market. Now this global market gives you uh, different uh, opportunities. One that speed of execution. Very, very important because if you see a trade today and you execute and maybe the trade is executed in the market come two days later, you might have wanted to buy this stock at 100, let's say $100. Three days later, that stock might be at 110. So if you are executing after three days, then you are late. But now these global markets using the platform that I've just showed you, you're able to execute those trades in whatever asset immediately you see the trade. The only thing is the exchange has to be open. The other thing is that the costs that you're going to be incurring, for example, in trading in the global markets compared to our local, which is maybe between 1% to 3%, you're going to realize is something between 0.8% and 0.5%. So even the execution costs is cheaper when it comes to global markets. Remember again through CMA, some of these regulations have been put in place so that uh, actually client can be encouraged to look uh, in different ways or models of investment. Now, most of us, I know we have been doing the local markets. Some of us are actually very comfortable with local markets, but then this now opens up for you as an investor or a trader, that new opportunity to be able to invest in something different, something new. And as we shall be looking at some of the charts, you're going to realize that in the global markets, the opportunity where you say, for example, uh, I'm trading, I'm putting this money maybe for long term, three years, five years, there are stocks in the global markets that double within a month. Some of them even double within a year. Some of them even go like 400% within a year, 700%. So the global market gives you a lot of liquidity in the market. That means you can invest your money today 
expecting to invest that money in one year, you get a very phenomenal return in less than six months. We shall be looking at that uh, in future slides. Basically, this is a breakdown of uh, S&P 500 representing different sectors and how actually those sectors have been divided to hold the S&P 500. Remember, I've said the S&P 500 basically indicates 500 large cap companies in America. Now, how this S&P 500 has been divided, it has been divided information and technology. Remember, as an investor, you don't want to do an investment in one area. Different counters always spreads your risk. Also, you're able now to create a balanced or a well-balanced portfolio. I believe that is actually what Ella is able to assist you guys with to understand how do you balance a portfolio so that, for example, if you have 10 million shillings and you want to invest that money, how would you balance that? The S&P 500 gives a very nice example. For example, information and technology. Now, when COVID hit, everybody, especially in offices, some of us were told to go and work from home. We still had to do meetings like this one. So we had to use now Zoom. That is in technology. Now, some of the technology-based companies have actually indicated to perform better than any other uh, sector in the entire uh, financial market. Because when you look at anything technology, we have Facebook. We have Twitter, we have Tesla, we have, let's say, Zoom, and so many other great companies that came up, large companies, very good returns in very short time. That's why even the S&P 500, when it comes to sectors balancing, you can see information technology is given 27%. Then we have healthcare. Now, healthcare, I have actually seen most uh, investors during this COVID time, invest in a lot of health care companies. You're going to realize there are companies that are creating vaccines. AstraZeneca, uh, Pfizer, uh, we have uh, Moderna. These companies are companies you as an investor or a trader, you can actually participate in, participate in buying right now. There is no good area of getting return, especially in terms of dividend yield than the healthcare area. That's a sector that pays very good dividends in terms of return. They usually appreciate slowly, apart from an example that we shall be looking at uh, of uh, Moderna, which actually doubled in price come July, but they usually pay very good. Now, this is a disease that hit the world, but it actually presented an opportunity for investors to participate in those companies because the growth of that company as they create the vaccine, the vaccine is actually depended on by the whole world. Any company that has come up with a vaccine, if you go and look at their stocks, you're going to realize they actually increased in value heavily. It was a bad thing for the COVID to happen, but then everything that happens as an investor, you're supposed to look at it from the point of, if this is happening, how can I participate in positively in making something for yourself? That is an opportunity right there, healthcare area. So apart from that, you're going to see uh, different areas, financial communications and all these. These are areas and sectors that we can actually go individually per investors in terms of your needs because they are traders or investors who will want to do uh, uh, basically, there are specific areas that you'll find a client would want to invest in this area, not in this area. So sometimes, again, when it comes to the how you are going to balance your portfolio, it's uh, investor to investor. So we're able to actually assist you in that area. And I believe Ella is going to be glad to do that for you guys. Sample of ETFs, we have different ETFs. Again, the sectors of these ETFs, you'll find ETFs that are based on innovation. For example, an ARK innovation ETF, whereby you find there are companies that have been chosen by that specific ETF to show clients how they can invest in an ETF that deals with innovation companies. We have autonomous technology and robotics. Basically, these are technologies that, let's say 15 years ago, they used to look as if they can't happen. Right now, we have robots that can communicate even better than humans. We have robots that have amazing skills, even sometimes than human. So we have ETFs that 
actually concentrate on that. We have next generation internet ETF, genomics revolution, this based on uh, human gene editing and all that. We have fintech innovation. This is where you'll get uh, companies that deal with, let's say, cryptocurrencies, like in a Coinbase. You're going to find them under fintech innovation ETFs. Space exploration. We have guys like in Elon Musk. These guys are on the race to actually explore the space. That is also another area as an investor, you can look to invest um, money in. Now, most of these ETFs, for example, the innovation, autonomous, the genomics, they're actually future-based ETFs. Basically, they are tracking the future. They're looking at areas of, if in future right now we have genomic revolution now implemented, let's say in medicine, it's going to be a life-changing thing because if you look at what those guys try to do is they are trying to go in and edit human genes. That means they can edit blindness. They can edit other defaults maybe somebody was born with. That means it's something of the future. But since robotics were also something that we used to look at it as something of the future, these guys are making tremendous steps in those specific areas. And that gives you an opportunity to actually take in as early as possible. We shall be looking at an example of how market moves in phases, and you'll see exactly what we are trying actually uh, to show. Now, these are sample stocks. Basically, we just chose a few. If need be, we can do uh, client to client in terms of uh, understanding uh, what companies they look to invest in. But as an example, for example, uh, NVIDIA Corporation, last year performance 121%. That's, you have doubled your money, and you have some change on top. Apart from that, this year so far, 45% in gain. The video cooperation is basically a worldwide lead in graphic processors and media communication devices. They make uh, phone chips, uh, they make uh, motherboards, the computers uh, for televisions and all that. They actually invest heavily in uh, technology. We have Tesla. These guys are concentrating on making, let's say, electric vehicles. Now, remember, if you looked at uh, the last G7 meeting, that guy, the people who were in that meeting came out with one specific thing. Everybody who is polluting the environment, we are going to be dealing with you in the next five years. And if actually you see what happened after that meeting, Tesla actually gained around 4.5% just because of that statement. Because again, electric cars, are not polluting anybody's environment. If you look at a population like China, around 1.8 billion people, if even, let's say, uh, 50 million people buy these cars, that's something for the company. So this company, Tesla, is investing in that area also, electric vehicles. And as at last year, this is, shall be looking at a chart, for example, the company shares moved 743%. Now, most of the time, market phases are very funny because they'll have that innovation phase, the bust phase, and then we'll see a correction. That means this year, that specific company has fallen in value 6.7%. But now looking at, uh, let's say, an average investor who has been doing, let's say, Nairobi Stock Exchange, if they're able to make maybe so much, let's say between 3% and 8%, they have actually, it has actually performed well. If you do 15% in NSC in a stock, that company have actually outperformed itself. Maybe at the moment, the company we are seeing in those ranges is Safaricom. Now, some of these companies, if you go in details about uh, the global companies, you're going to realize this one very unique issue about them. If you're trading Safaricom, for example, it's a good company. You are trading in a regional company. That means, for example, next year, we're going to be having, uh, let's say, elections. If you go to a research was done by a uh, university of Nairobi and KU University, they actually found out that every cycle of election, for example, in Kenya, the Nairobi Stock Exchange is usually hit negatively. Reason being, most of this money is from outside. They are, we have investors from outside pumping money in Nairobi Stock Exchange. If they see uncertainty, especially during campaigns and then um, presidential election, that uncertainty is investors don't want. So they usually remove their money from 
NSC, and that makes some of the companies to actually fall in value. Compare that to a company like Tesla, which is now traded all over the world, or even Coca-Cola, for example. If you look at the way Coca-Cola operates, it is very hard for Coca-Cola to be affected by politics of one country. Reason being, it's a multinational company. That means it's traded in so many exchanges and in so many places in the world. That means the effects of one country to affect Coca-Cola, it's very difficult. The other thing is about liquidity. In Nairobi Stock Exchange, we have had a company like, for example, Chumi. We have had a company like Momias. People bought shares. The company went down. Again, because maybe politics and all that. If you look at uh, the liquidity you get in a global company, a company that is listed all over, the liquidity is massive. That means there's no single day you can go and say, uh, I've bought Coca-Cola shares. For Coca-Cola to fall, uh, it will take a whole Europe, the whole of America, and some other maybe very strong and powerful guys. Last thing about that is the aspect of you being able to access, just being able to access. If you look at a company like Moderna, this is a pharmaceutical company. Among the items they are creating as you speak is the vaccine. Again, this company last year, 82%. This year only, 242%, in which most of this gain was actually in this last month. I saw people double their account using this specific stock. They just bought the stock because these guys had a potential. Now, some of this analysis, of course, LA is going to be assisting you guys to be able to understand maybe what all this is about. But the opportunity is actually great. If you go to an ETF like uh, the SPDR, S&P 500 ETF, last year, 15%, year to date, another 15%. That's up around 30%. If you look at ARK Innovation ETF, last year, 148% gain. Of course, this is, has gone down. Now, the best thing about most of these corrections is that now they give you an opportunity as an investor to actually now come in at a discounted price. Remember, for stocks and ETFs, how you trade them is if the price is way up there, you wait for that stock to fall in value. The moment it falls in value, we call it price discounting itself. That discounted price, if the stock was, let's say, 100, the stock now comes down to, let's say, 80. You have a discount of 20 shillings. You can actually now buy in that specific stock at that better offering, which is 80 instead of 100. So when you see a correction like this, this is actually something very nice because you're able now to buy at a discount. Now, when it comes to markets, we have different faces in every single market. We're going to realize that most markets started maybe during the IPO, the prices were very low. Most of the time, people don't like buying at that low price. You'll find maybe during this invasion period, it's only a few large cap companies that have bought in and maybe wealthy individuals who maybe have the information. And most people are skeptical and they're like, uh, we don't want to buy now but this is actually the best time to invest when the prices are way down there. So this phase usually will get, not many people want to invest here. Now, when the bust starts happening, which usually happens rapidly, you're going to see now most people buy here. So you have two ways. You can actually buy during the invention phase, which you have to wait a long time. Because if you look at this invention phase, this since 2012 to 2018, most people do not have that patience. During the past period, this is where you see most people now come in. This is where now everybody is talking about it. Everybody is now on it. If you're not able to catch this specific move, you can wait for a correction. For example, the way we have seen uh, the ARK ETF is now falling in price. That's what we call a correction in price. Now, during that correction, the price is discounting itself. So you can now prepare yourself so that if the discount is, let's say, between 10 and 15%, 20% at most, you're able to take your position and you're actually able now to capitalize in that specific area. Apart from that, uh, we shall be looking at different charts together. Basically, uh, I don't know whether Ella, you have something to add before I continue. Uh, on that, no, I think we are still 
as well, we are also learning a lot of things. So I think we shall, con let's continue until the end and then we have to take the questions. We can't hear you. No, I'm saying yes. we can actually take uh, the chats maybe during the question time so oh, that we okay. save on the specific time because chats we have to go into some few details but yes. the chats are just to prove for you guys actually uh, this market moves in a way that if you compare it with any other let's say local market or any other market it's uncomparable so we shall be looking at this as our last slide on top of which now there are different people who will ask now how do i get into this market how do i participate and what I can tell you is that through scope markets, it's very easy to participate in the global markets because like the local market, which most people understand, you usually need a broker and then you need a CDS account. Now in our case, the CDS account is the trading platform, which is MT5. That's where all your assets are held in. That's where you're able to see all your assets. Apart from which you will need a transactional account now that is what you're going to be opening with the brokerage, which is scope markets. So that transactional account is usually where all the money is put. Now that account and the MT5, they're usually interconnected. So you're able to see your balance in the client portal and you're able to see your balance in the trading platform. The only difference is the trading platform is purely for trading. You can't do transaction there and there transactional account is where you do deposits that's where you do withdrawals and so many other uh, transactional based uh, information that you can get apart from that when you get the account i shall be showing you how and what you need and also more explanation on the accounts but what i wanted to put across is that getting an account takes between four hours and one working day if you provide us with all the requirements uh, you can actually have your account by end of day. That means in one day, if you dedicate, for example, Monday and up Fungu account, you can do everything that single day, including executing your first trade. So there's no lengthy process at it because it's a, we are dealing with the uh, global markets. Basically what usually happens, a scope market, we have an in-house compliance department where you just provide your documents you'll be able to vet everything there's a form that you fill in after that you'll be able to get actually your account ready after that you just put in your capital select the item you want to buy or the asset and as simple as that you will be in the financial markets so basically what you need to get an account a proof of identity usually your id or a passport which is valid I'm at the, digit, the new digital driving license. For proof of residence, you'll either need a KRA PIN certificate. For the local, uh, for citizens in Kenya, we require a KRA PIN by law. So the KRA PIN basically is, if you look at your KRA PIN below there, there's some residential address that you put in. And because it's a government issued document, we usually use that document as your proof of residence. The other thing you will need is an email, a registered phone number under your name. Remember, as a client who wants to trade, one, you cannot use any other person's information, whether phone number or documents. Everything has to match your details from the ID to the telephone number. Again, the telephone number is simply because we usually, uh, most of the time, say use M-Pesa for transactions. And these M-Pesa transactions are usually instant. But for that number to be allowed to do the transaction in that account has to be under your name. Apart from that, you can, uh, you'll be required actually to provide a bank statement in future. Most of the time is because sometimes you'll make money that you can't withdraw via M-Pesa. Now, for a scope market to submit the money that you want to withdraw maybe via bank, we will need to identify that that bank statement or that bank belongs to you. So at that time, you may be required to provide a bank statement. We also usually tell you to provide us our next of kin. There's a form that you fill in. And basically these account openings, we usually don't charge our clients for accounts. We, we will not charge you because you created an account. And most of the time at most one working days, if you provide everything, you will have your account ready. Now, different... 
Yes, Ella. Um, what is the minimum amount? Now, a uh, minimum amount you usually don't tell you about minimum amounts. How you calculate or how you identify that? Mm -hmm. One, you will have to identify the asset you want to buy. For example, if you want to buy Tesla, you will go on the platform, which is MT5, and identify how much does one uh, Tesla share cost. Just like the way you'd want to buy Safaricom shares, you have to know how much is one. If you know Tesla shares is $700 per share, then the next question is, how much money do I have that I want to invest in Tesla? Let's say you have 5,000 USD. You just take the 5,000, you divide by the amount of the number of uh, the amount of per share and you'll be able to know how many stocks you can buy so the answer to that is always in the asset you as an individual you want to buy the moment you know that you'll be able to buy the other good thing about that bit is this if you look at our local markets the stocks are bought in clusters of 100 for the global markets you buy shares from one that means if you want to buy Tesla shares and you can't afford two, you can buy only one. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Yes, sir. Any other question? No, we can go on. Okay. Now, when it comes to this part, there are what we call corporate actions. So corporate actions denotes an event that might impact the share price, outstanding, shares amount of relevant company. Now, this include right issues, their mergers, their conversion, share splits, and all these things. There are also dividends that will be announced by different companies. Now, remember, the dividend bit is always based on the company policy. So it's not a scope market will only give you access to those companies. So when you are selecting the company, you'll also need to understand, do those companies that you are selecting pay dividends? Now, if the dividend is paid, you would want to understand how that comes back until it reflects, let's say, in your balance. Basically, all that information is through MT5. So the MT5, what usually happens, when those dividends are paid back, remember, for external exchanges, like uh, the New York Stock Exchange, they usually charge uh, a tax, a withholding tax of 30%. That is from the dividends or the profits of, let's say, the stocks that you bought. Now that dividend, because it has been taxed, whatever will remain will reflect back in your balance. And in the MT5, the history part or the statement part, it will be indicated that this company paid this dividend because you had two shares, for example, the outcome of the dividend was $50. The $50 was taxed, uh, this tax was removed, and this is what remained. So in the history part, we'll get all that information. Again, this is not, not information that you will need to call anybody to get it. It's always in that trading platform. So the issue of asking for statements via email or calling your agent, those ones are also eliminated. You can get your information when you want it. That information is always displayed there and then the balance will reflect plus what came in as dividend. There is what we call share splits. For example, a share is very expensive and a company feels uh, maybe investors are not able to afford. So they can do a split of one is to two. In that case, if you already pre-owned those shares, the effect of that corporate action is usually communicated in the MT5. And after all that is done, the effect of that corporate action is usually reflected in your share. So if you had two and they did a split of one is to two, then it means now you have four. What will happen, the shares usually increase in number, but the value of the share increase. But either way, when you calculate backwards, the price is always still the same. I'm at the price of what you paid and the value for what you paid for is usually the same. So for corporate actions or any other action that might happen because of a company usually reflects in the MT5. And then you'll always get a communication via email, both from the exchange and from scope markets. Dividend payments, all that client shares can be created into the MT5 account balance. The dividend may be subject to tax deduction based on the 
listing jurisdiction. Again, different jurisdiction will have a different uh, taxation uh, models. For the US is usually 30% withholding. One may choose to reinvest the dividends or withdraw as cash payment. Remember, if you have money in your account, your MT5 account, you have money and you bought one stock and you have some money remaining, it means that money or that cash is idle money. Now you have options with that idle money. You can either both buy something else like a stock or you have the choice of withdrawing. Same for the dividends. You have the choice of either reinvesting them or withdrawing them a specific uh, cash dividends. Now let's say for example, a company is delisted. You bought a uh, Tesla and Tesla is now being delisted. What usually happens maybe to your, to your investments? If at any time trading on the underlying market is suspended in any security that forms subject of client transaction, then the applicable transaction will also be suspended and neither the client nor the company will be able to sell such securities until such suspension is terminated and trading commence. This simply means this. If you look at what happened, for example, to Chumi, uh, you're going to realize there are people who own shares still. They can't sell them. Because again, there's no liquidity, there's nobody to buy. Liquidity simply means that aspect of when you want to sell, you sell. When you want to buy, you buy. It means we have them available. And we have both buyers and sellers again available. Now, in this case, if such a thing happens, then the same would happen even in the global markets. However, if you look at what CMA did with when they are giving or when the uh, regulation of the 2017 was enacted, they usually allow only large companies to be listed on online trading platform. What that simply means is, one, they will not go to a company that is starting. It's not a new company. It's not a company that came in the market two years ago. They don't even understand it. They will look only for a brokerage in Kenya with a platform for people to trade online to have that be done only in the large cap companies. Now that gives a very good protection for investors. The reason being, there's no single time you're expecting a company like Coca-Cola to just vanish or a company like Facebook, you just wake up and Facebook disappeared. So the regulator actually looked into all those aspects. And even in this presentation, we're going to find a note that we majorly look at large cap companies. I know some people will ask about uh, a penny stock companies, IPOs, those ones are not on the platform again because of that aspect of security of a company maybe being IPO'd and then one year later the company is now down and you are in this specific uh, situation where the instruction is in respect of a company that is delisted from underlying market goes into insolvency or is dissolved at which point the client's order will be canceled and any security held will be dealt with accordance with the terms of delisting, insolvency and dissolution. Again, remember we are investing in the global market. That means those jurisdiction or those specific country, if for example is America, they have a way they do delisting, there's a procedure set by law. So whatever that procedure dictates, backward now to the investor, if such a thing happens, then they will follow the specific law to gain either what will have remained back to the person who had invested in such uh, companies that have been dissolved. Apart from that, uh, the other keynote is we actually at Scope Market, again, our license states very categorical. We are a non-dealing brokerage. Being a non-dealing simply means a scope market will only provide the accessibility into the financial markets. Now, there are people who will say, I, I want you guys to trade for me and all that. A scope market usually don't trade for clients. And again, if you have complaints, for example, with regards to your account, sometimes you may leave your password somewhere, maybe under your laptop or somewhere, and maybe somebody accessed your trading account and unfortunately maybe did things in that account that you don't understand. If you have any complaint, usually 
you're usually actually attached to an account manager through Scope Markets, where you can actually ask a search question with regards to you, specifically your account. So we usually don't trade for clients, number one. And number two, if you have complaints, we usually tell you to launch them as early as you notice. I'll give you an example. We have had a client complain of an order was executed in his account without his knowledge. What that client did not know, he just left his laptop on the desk and went outside to make a call. Coming back, kumbe the kid alipita up, wakapata kitu imifunguliwa, and the kid started playing with the computer. Unfortunately, the kid left two trades running. Now, the client did not put the trades, of course, but the trades are in the platform and they have been executed. Now, the best thing about the MT5, we're able to identify through the journal where that trade, the person who executed, executed the trade from where including the IP address of. So that usually secures your trading platform. We usually tell you to have a password, even for your uh, trading platform. If it's in the phone, have like a pattern or a password. Don't just leave it open for people because if that accessibility have been given, somebody else gets it and maybe they don't understand, you might find yourself with the trades that you do not maybe, and that, or even open trades being closed. Remember, the execution is instant, so is the closing. That means somebody can close a running trade within a second. You going out and coming back in and the trade is gone. So if you have any complaints, always communicate as fast as possible. Now, there are two questions that we usually get. Question number one is this money that you're investing with, who holds the money? That's number one. Number two, the assets you buy, for example, for the local case, you will have the CDS account. That's where you are. all your assets are held. So what about when it comes to online? Now, what you're going to realize about money, the money that you're investing in, for example, you have your 1 million shillings, you want to buy certain shares, you will have to deposit that money. That money is usually deposited in what we call a segregated bank account. Now that bank account is not directly accessible by scope market. The way a segregated bank account works is money is usually set aside from the account of the day-to-day -day activities of the company. Now, again, scope market can't access those funds. They only control those funds based on one, the client purchase. That's how the money is moved. So for example, a client will ask, uh, let's say I have seen brokers maybe come and the broker fails. Maybe the broker is dissolved, for example. What usually happens now to my money? With a segregated bank account, the money is not with scope markets. It's usually set aside. The accessibility of those funds is through the regulator. The regulator can issue now, uh, let's say a letter now to the bank to pay back maybe the people who had deposited money in those specific account. That means the settlement is not between scope markets and you. It's between the regulator, the bank, and then you. The same case, I'll give an example of, let's say, M-Pesa. If you deposit money in M-Pesa, the money usually goes to, let's say, NCBA. If the money goes there, if today Safaricom was to disappear, all our money will be refunded through and CBA, of course, by law through the guidelines that have been set. So under CMA, we are given the same, uh, means the same criteria. That means all funds are put separate from funds of scope market day-to-day -day operation. Number two, the asset, all client assets are held under a client custody asset account registered under SCFM Limited with a custodian of SM, CM regulated by the Cyprus Securities. Now, the reason for us having a SM capital is the aspect of if you are buying less shares, uh, you're buying shares in Europe and you are in Kenya, that means money has to move to another, a segregated uh, custodian account. That money, the way it's moving, will have to have another segregated custodial in the base ama in the jurisdiction of where you are buying. That means we need another custody on the other side. In this case, it's usually SM capital regulated by Cyprus Securities Exchange Commissioner Masisek. 
These client assets are also segregated from asset of SM capital. That means they operate the same way we operate here. Now, what you're going to realize about most of these regulations, the way the reason is to way they are the way they are, is because come 2017, when regulation were being enacted for online trading in Kenya, capital market authority prior to that did not have the regulation in place. That means they had to go into those areas that they feel this has really worked well for investors. And through that, they're able to copy some of the things that those guys are doing and bring the same now to Kenya. So the issue of segregation was actually very, very good. And this I usually challenge all our, in, our traders or investors. Most of the time when you feel you fear, the best thing is to go to the same two places. Start with the regulator. Go and ask questions also. Ask the regulator. These guys, are they regulated? Is my money safe? If my money is safe, uh, how is it safe? They will explain. Failure to which you can even also go maybe, let's say, bank. The bank will always go and ask, how does a segregated bank account work? The bank will always explain the same to you. Even if you're not asking specifically as for scope market because of investment, they're able to even explain more for you so also do your due diligence we don't tell clients to just do things um, because we are telling them we want you to also do your due diligence apart from that a daily reconciliation will be conducted in line with the cma regulation and that is to make sure that there is no any form of malpractice that has been done at any given time that means cma scope market have to do a reconciliation on a daily basis to see these clients have bought these stocks and those stocks have actually been bought for the client accordance to the way the process is supposed to happen. Apart from that, guys, I don't have much to add. I believe I've come to the end of my presentation. The only thing I'll add is something very small. Every time there's an opportunity, there are those who will fear, there are those who will take up the opportunity immediately. If you decide to fear, it's still okay. It's a mechanism of how people sometimes cope with the issue. But what I can tell you is this, if you see an opportunity, always take these opportunities earlier enough because the people who take these opportunities early they're the people who actually end up benefiting at the end of the day. So if you want any maybe more clarification on things, I think uh, Ella is going to take us through the question and the answer bit. So Ella. Uh, thank you so much, Peter. I think it's been, you can take a sip of water. I know how your throat is feeling, yeah? Talking for all those minutes. Um, so, as Peter is saying, um, of course, and um, you should take advantage. There is a, a saying by Warren Buffett that says, um, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So look at the opportunities that are presented to you and see whether you should take advantage of that. Um, I will say another thing that is there in the investment world. However, before that, um, Peter, if you don't mind, if you can answer just one question, what is the tax that is usually on the investment? Is it capital gains or is it withholding tax? Yeah. I can, uh, repeat the question. What is the tax charged on your investment? For individuals, now that part, that question is actually very interesting and very nice. Now, when it comes to individuals, you're going to realize one thing about taxation. Taxation, when it comes to you as a person, is usually heavy. When it comes to institutions, is actually very small. Reason being, the mechanism of tax is usually different. So when it comes to you as an individual, the taxation is on both. It can be dividends, can be capital gain, is usually taxed. But for institution, the capital one is not usually, uh, the capital gain is usually not taxed. It's only the dividend. So again, looking at it from the perspective of um, taxation and investment for individuals, it's a bit high. However, if you look at, um, let's say, for example, um, the way these companies gain, I have seen a client invests, get a gain that he was yes taxed, 
the money came back reflected in the MT5, but that client never even realized he was taxed because he could not imagine the amount of money he has made out of that specific trade. So it all depends with how you want to come in as an investor. There are those guys who will choose to invest as a company. Maybe you have a company, you can choose to use that or you can invest as an individual. The only difference is in the taxation model for individuals is a bit heavier than the company. The other thing is that remember when it comes to stocks, the gain is in two areas. So the gain can be in the dividend yield and the increase in value of that specific stock. You bought a stock as $100, the stock by the end of the year is at $200. So it has gained by 100 plus now the dividend yield if that company usually pays dividend. Again, we have said the dividend, you have to know prior to buying that stock. Do they pay dividend? Do they have that culture of paying dividend? And if so, maybe how have they been paying? Now that will also go back to person to person in terms of investment. Okay. Um, I think Anthony, I hope Caroline, you've been answered. Uh, Anthony? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rose. Uh, thank you, Peter. It has been a very uh, informative session. Uh, my question is, most of the time when I see maybe a broker is offering stocks and ETFs on MT4 or MT5, it's usually not, you're not buying the stock, but you're buying a CFD on the stock. Uh, and, that's, and that tends to operate. And basically, my question is, is the scope markets offer when I buy, let's say, Tesla, uh, maybe five shares of Tesla, uh, am I buying the actual stock or am I buying a CFD on the on the on the Tesla stock itself? Thank you, Attorney. Actually, my apologies because I failed to mention about that. Now it seems you have actually interacted with these markets. The question just to answer you in plain, you are buying the actual stock. Now, what Anthony is asking is what uh, Nairobi Stock Exchange did the other day they came up with derivatives now a derivative from the word derive i'm a derived from usually happens when you are trading in an asset you have tesla the derivative or the cfd and you have the real tesla when you're trading on a derivative you are trading on the shadow of the actual asset it means when you buy a cfd tesla share one you are not a shareholder Two, you don't have any voting rights. You don't own a piece of Tesla at all. What you are doing is you're participating in price change of that specific asset. That is what we call a CFD, a contract for difference, where you buy at 100, the stock changes to 200, you are paid for that difference. Now, when it comes to physical shares or the actual stocks, you are buying a piece of that company. You are a shareholder. You are getting one, let's say a company has a million shares. If you buy one, they now have 999,000 shares. So you are a shareholder. So there is usually those two opportunities. Now, the reason is why in this presentation, we did not put in the CFD shares is because we have seen CFD shares to be a bit high risk because the way they move, they are leveraged. Anything that is leveraged is a bit um, riskier because you can lose all your capital. But when it comes to a physical stock, the worst that can happen is you buying a stock at 100 and the stock maybe goes back to 90. It means it has lost some value. But at the end of the day, when you look at stocks, they will always appreciate in value. Hence the purpose for this webinar, the reason is why we focused majorly on only physical shares and ETFs, where you become a shareholder. So Anthony, to answer your question, we are not talking about the derivative or the CFD shares, but that does not mean we do not have them. Just that for this webinar, we chose these two assets. Okay, Anthony, I hope you have been answered. Mary Mutumbi, yes, the 
request the, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, we shall share the recording to your emails once we are done, uh, hopefully by tomorrow morning once we are once we bring it everything into one folder. Um, there is a question from Titus. Are there swap charges for holding stocks? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Now again, when it comes to physical shares or physical holdings, what you're going to realize is that there's usually no swap. But if you participate in what Anthony was asking, the CFD shares, then in that case, you get to pay a swap. So for physical assets like the stocks we're talking here about today, for ETFs that you're talking about here today, there's usually no swap charged. Basically, a swap uh, is an interest rate differential between maybe countries. So you get charged overnight every time that specific uh, asset that you have bought goes overnight so per night you get a certain charge usually not big but when you put it now in stocks because stocks mostly you are holding for a bit at least three months six months one year then that small charge usually accumulates maybe to a bigger charge but for physical ones there is no swap charged and uh, basically even um, when you are filling in the client agreement usually put in the charges that you're going to incur and the charges that you're going to incur usually uh, there's the custodial fee. There's usually a 16% uh, of the custodial fee, SVAT. There's usually the brokerage fee. But when we do the calculation, because as now we go in uh, to independent investors, you're going to realize, for example, for a hundred dollars invested, you can be charged something between two dollars and 3.5 dollars so it's still below the one percent so basically the charges when it comes to physical stocks it's a bit low especially for global markets and again as a brokerage the reason is why would put that cost lower is again to encourage people to look at at it as an alternative model of what they're used to the local markets so even by law we are told not to maybe charge clients very expensive. And again, as a broker and being this is a new business in terms of the citizens of Kenya have not yet identified they can actually own a physical stock in New York Stock Exchange. So for us to even motivate them, we are not charging anything past 2%, at most maybe 2%, but as we speak, is actually barely below 1%, the whole charge for even $100 invested. All right, I hope Titus, you have been answered. Um, Peter, we will go back to a few slides up to um, the graphs. Remember we skipped that. But before we do that, or as we do that, um, so there's, there's always something that we usually say as much as possible. Um, try and avoid emotions when you're coming to, when exactly when you're coming to invest, especially in some things, do your due diligence um, completely. Don't, don't invest because other people are investing, but invest because you feel that you should invest. And I want to read a quote that has been there in Wall Street that says, bears make money, bulls make money, but the pigs get slaughtered there. Yeah? The pigs are us who go into an investment just because my friend invested and made money last year. Let me see whether I can do the same yeah. So make sure that as much as possible, you're doing your due diligence, read on your own, not just what we as Vasily tell you or what Scope Markets tells you or what your friend told you, but read on your own, feel comfortable to invest in a certain asset and then invest, yeah? And as uh, Peter is still taking a sip, I will read the next uh, question that has been asked by Titus. What is the minimum deposit for Scope Markets? Um, I think that had been answered at some point, but um, you will just take us through again. Okay. Now for uh, the deposit, this is actually how this procedure usually works. When you're registering for the account, you will provide the documents first and the information required. So we'll open the account for you. When you open the account, the account is usually now uh, 
that means it has been verified. Your documents are okay. You have no, remember as a compliance department, they will go deeper, they will dig deeper. We don't want to onboard maybe somebody who has been involved in a case of, let's say, uh, maybe he had acquired some money illegally, or the reason as to why they will dig is to just find out who you are in details. After that, when you're onboarded and the account is verified, we usually add the first account, which is called the wallet account. Now, inside this wallet account is where you will do your first initial deposit. That initial deposit is actually something like, let's say, $20. Now, that $20 is not a payment for anything. Again, remember I said the accounts are not charged for opening. It's just a, an amount of money you are putting in the account for account to be like activated. This $20 will still be part of your capital. So note that the money is not a payment. It's an activation. That money will still remain to be part of your capital. That means when now you put in your capital of what you want to spend, the $20 will be added inside that specific capital. Now, when it comes to the capital you want to use, that is dependent on, for example, let's actually go to that specific, uh, let's go to the chart so that I can show you exactly what, uh, so I don't know whether, uh, Ella, I stopped sharing this one, I share the screen for uh, Chrome. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. screen is disappearing. Nice. I've seen it. So let me show you how you decide now on the capital, because the capital is not dictated. We can't tell you a scope market. This is the capital you need. The only way we will tell you is, like any other business that you are doing, the larger gain is always in how much you invested at the end of the day. For example, somebody who is investing $100 cannot expect to make the same amount of money somebody with $1 million capital will gain. But how is the capital dictated? So you'll just come here and first identify what stock do you want to buy? For example, if I just go and search Moderna stocks, this is an example of a company actually that I wanted us to go through. The first thing you will do is identify the asset, number one. Number two, how much does it cost? So what now you will do to decide as an investor how much money you need is based exactly on that, identifying the asset first, and secondly, knowing how much does one cost. Now, if you already know it's 375.53, the next question is how many can I afford to buy now? Or how many do I want to buy in this specific stock? And you multiply that number by that specific asset value as at the time of, wanting to purchase. The value you get now becomes your capital. Ella? I was actually doing the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But basically, it's not necessarily that you start with uh, the heavy ones. The only thing the, and the reason I was trying, I would urge you not to concentrate more even on the values because remember again as an investor what you're looking at is where can you get value back easily without straining or waiting for a whole year stocks initially used to be a business of people who can wait five actually people look used to look at stock investment as a model where you put money for the next five years with global markets things are totally different because here, you are only going to be looking for opportunities that you can put in a stock and then wait for a month, two months. By third month, most of them always have appreciated. So sometimes we will tell a client, don't concentrate mostly on it's expensive or it needs a lot of money, like how you would look into where can I get value very fast. And this is an example. Okay. I think it becomes um, more like a short trading uh, model where you look at, as you said, you look at the value that you're going to gain. You don't hold it more for dividends, but you look at um, 
where it's going, where the company is going, of course, please keep your ear on the ground, use the internet, um, not to help you make or jump into decisions, but as a learning tool, yeah? Uh, learn as much as you can so that you're able to um, to make decisions also very fast. And I think that the platform that Scope Markets is giving us or is, is going to help us make, like you can be able to move very fast. You can make be able to either decide, let me put in more capital or let me take out um, cash. Um, I think, Peter, you also need to expound on how we can be able to date as fast as possible. And also, we go back to the graphs again. Um, yeah, and I think the question that you're going, the, the question of withdrawing and uh, depositing on the wallet, um, I think that one you will cover on the withdrawal, how you can be able to liquidate the funds. And if there are charges. Okay. Now, when it comes to after you have been verified, you now have a trading account. I'll give you an example. Let me just actually open my trading, my trading platform. That's one. The other thing, let me actually open my scope markets, uh, my scope markets account so that I take you through that specific uh, bit. So basically what usually happens, usually come to our website and then I'll come login. And then after logging in, this basically is a sample of what you're supposed to be seeing as you log in into your client portal. So this is how it looks. This is now the transactional account. This is the reason as to why you will be asked to provide your KRA and your identity card. When you're in this area, the dashboard usually just displays what you have been able to do with your account and all that. Apart from which, there's a profile bit. This is where you will fill in your information about yourself. There's some information that will be required. Then there's the trading accounts. You'll be able to add an account right using this button right here. So when I click that button, I'll get an option to add an account. When you add an account, now you have where you can put in the money. That's now your transactional account right there. The same thing, this account number you see here will become your trading account number. The moment you open it, you will receive an email. The email usually has this account number it will give you a password and then it will give you a server. That information is what you will use to log into your MT5. Apart from which the wallet bit is based now on deposits and withdrawals. So when it comes to deposits and withdrawals, we have bank transfers, we have IPA Africa. This is where you're going to get all your mobile money payment methodologies. If you want to use, let's say something like Skrill, you can use this one is a wallet like uh, PayPal. All these models are available. All models of depositing money with scope markets are available apart from cash. You cannot deposit cash. That's one. Number two, you will not be allowed to do a cash deposit in the scope markets bank account. For example, you have your 100,000, you walk into a bank, for example, I&M, and you tell them, I want this cash deposit deposited in Scope Markets account. That is not allowed. That money has to go first to your bank account, and then you do a bank transfer. Has to be account to account. Now, when it comes to bank transfers, deposit withdrawals usually tell you between, they will reflect between two days and three days at most using bank transfer. It means you are doing lump sum deposits or withdraw. When it comes to this IP Africa, this is where you get all your mobile monies. Mobile monies are usually instant. If you put money with M-Pesa, for example, when you will be depositing, let's say the $20, which is 2000 Bob, you're going to realize it's instant. Deducts the same methodology you'd want to send money to someone, it's instant. Withdraw, we'll also test that together. It's usually instant using mobile money. If you're using a Visa card or a MasterCard to deposit, 
where you put the card details, the deposit can take up to two hours and so is the withdrawal. Remember again, when you're using a card or a bank, then it means money is moving from the account to another account. That means it takes another, uh, a bit longer route because banks have to do all those transactions, not scope markets. But for M-Pesa, it's internally connected via IP Africa. That means money gets in and out in instantly. Ella? I think we have been answered on that. Okay. I think as, as we try and wind up, you can, um, if there are any questions, please keep them coming. Um, so that I uh, want to see whether we can finish by in the next three minutes. But we can go back to the graphs again. <laughs> okay. Now, actually, I wanted to show you guys something. If, for example, these are some of the sites that you can use. Now, when you come to stock screeners, this way you'll be able to get a company and you'll be able to understand the history of that company. The best other thing is that this site is able to compare the company with other companies in the same industry. So you're able to look at different, uh, one company comparing it with other different companies. Now, at the moment, as a wise investor, the easiest way to invest your money without fear is this. Look at what is happening in the world, invest in that at that specific moment. If right now we have COVID, ask yourself, how can I profit because of COVID? I'm not talking about the COVID millionaires. I'm talking about how you can profit legally through trading in areas that after COVID, they were either affected negatively or positively. For example, this is Johnson & Johnson, okay? Apart from other products, they are still creating the vaccine. Now, this company will be able to see the short story about what is happening to it, uh, maybe from year to date, last year, last close, and all that percentage change. And if they paid, let's say a dividend. Again, you're able to see a chart of how the company has been performing all time, as in since the company was IPO'd. If you look at this company where it started the year 1970s, the stock was barely a dollar barely a dollar right now it's around 180 the other way you look at it is year to date you're looking at from the beginning of january to now the company has actually moved from 154 it's now at around 177 we are actually in as uh, we are headed to september that means in nine months the company has actually given you over 25 dollars that's a very nice gain. The other thing you can do with this uh, site, I believe Ella will be sharing them with you guys, is you're able to compare the specific, the specific industries in that area. So here you will have other companies that are doing the same business Johnson & Johnson is doing. For example, here you have Pfizer. They're also creating a vaccine. If you open Pfizer, you'll be able to see the same details, but now for Pfizer as a company, you'll be able to see the market faces that we just talked about, where it's just innovation, nothing is happening here. And then we have the busts. After the busts, we have a correction. So as a wise investor, you usually count if the correction is, let's say, 20%, uh, 15, 20%, you buy in, and then you wait for the price again to move. So this specific company actually from the year uh, began, I have seen uh, people invest in it because again, it was actually going upwards. The other thing in this site, you're able to actually compare and see year after year how that company has performed ever since it has actually opened. So you have the whole history in one site to understand the specific companies. Now, some of these things Ella will assist you guys do. So you're able to see, let's say 2021, so far 32% gain. Again, these stocks, I told you guys, they gain fast. They gain easily because they are multinational companies. If they're affected by something positively, something like Zoom the other day, the company just burst in value. So this is an example of a company that you guys can 
actually go and start looking at. Apart from which we have uh, this interesting company uh, called uh, Moderna. The reason I was looking at this company is because if you look at what happened um, actually last month, this company doubled in value in barely a month. That means somebody who invested $235 at that time, which is around um, $24,000, let us say, they actually got double the amount back. Now, that one, you don't even have to wait for it to pay you a dividend. You can actually clock out that and say for that investment, it was a perfect, a perfect winner. Again, this company did what you call a stock split. That means 2019, 2020 is when they restarted again with this new specific curve. Again, this company, they have a deal with Canada. Something good is coming out of that area. Those are informations that now we provide to clients, maybe depending with your model of investing and what you want to specifically invest in. Maybe what I can show you guys with regards to with regards to the platform. Let me just share my MT5 platform. I just need to show you an example of how it looks. So the platform usually looks something like this, where you are able to actually see the assets. I hope you can see my screen, all of you. So the platform usually looks something like this. So if I come here, I'm able to see my accounts. I'm able to log in my, to my stocks account. Again, remember with this platform, you can have so many accounts. For example, you might want to invest for the purpose, for the purpose of, let's say, uh, you want to buy a car, let's say in two years, you can have one account here where that account, the investment are directed to that specific project. You have, uh, let's say, uh, you want to retire at, let's say, 50. And right now, let's say you are 30 and you are planning to be putting, let's say, 3,000 shillings every end month to buy a different stock. You can have that account right here. You can say, I want to construct my house in the next five years. You can have that account here. That means the platform is able to hold for you so many accounts. So different projects, different accounts, and you're able to know this one pays my bills. This one pays my school fees for my kids. This one is for a car. This one is for whatever it is that you want to do. So you can have so many accounts right here. And this is the same platform. That means you don't have to, um, to have different platform. Nikama, when you on WhatsApp and you have so many people, you can chat in that specific WhatsApp. So you can have all those accounts and then you'll have now the, the specific uh, companies right here. You just come and select whatever it is that you want, let's say, to look at. Let's say Bank of America. Bank of America, you're able to come here and say, uh, this is a chart of that specific stock. So the analysis is very simple. The stocks will always... That's what you're looking for. So if you already have a small drop of, let's say 4%, if this stock was maybe to come down a little bit, maybe up to that area, again, an area of support, you'd look maybe to buy that specific stocks. So this is how maybe you'll do a simple analysis. Remember, this platform is has so many features. For example, today, uh, this company is worth $40. If this company is $40 and you feel as if it's going to discount all the way to 38, you can actually put in a pending order. A pending order is simply you saying, I don't want to buy today, but I'm leaving this money here. If the price ever goes to 38, I want that stock automatically bought in the market. So you'll put in a pending order. That pending order will stay there. Whenever this price comes to 38, that order will be executed. There's another automation because this is a, an online system, so it's able to be automated. You can automate what we call take profit, meaning what? If this price hits this point, the stock is bought. If this price hits this point of 42, the price is sold, even without your participation. You don't have to sit there and watch it. You just put in pending orders, take profit and you walk away. Look at it maybe in two months, you will find out that the trade was executed, the trade was closed. 
the money will reflect in your account. As simple as that. All these are things that we shall be taking you guys individually, step by step. Ella? Interesting. Um, I think I'm learning more than anybody else here. <laughs> it's very interesting and it's very intense. Um, I think it's something that as we spoke with you, Peter, we shall keep doing once in a while so that people we can see how many people have started investing and how we can help people now. But in case of any questions, you can always reach out to Peter. Um, I we had shared his contacts. I will share the contacts as well. Um, and you can also reach out to us. Uh, we shall be able to assist yeah, where we can. Yeah. But for the platform, in case you have questions for the platform, in case you have already started investing, uh, we shall have Peter get in touch with you and see how they can assist from their side as home markets. Yes. As we said, if you do not want to have the trouble of investing on your own, um, if you don't have don't want to wake up every day and start doing the analysis you can there's always another way where you can invest the funny thing is the same company that um offers the collective investments into the global markets also uses their scope markets platform but yes so it is one and the same thing at least the best thing is we are assured that this is a brokerage um that has been um regulated or has been given the mandate by capital markets authority so we don't want to see things that have like what have been happening in the last couple of weeks i think about three weeks ago about 40 of um global brokerages or offshore stocks brokerages were kind of closed down by capital markets authority so let's do our due diligence when it comes to investing and um ask questions where we need to ask and then when you're comfortable, then you can invest. All right. Asante Nisana for joining us. Um, I think we close it at that. If you have any questions, any further questions, kindly, kindly please email us and we shall be sure to share the answers with you. Um, this is our email address. Um, before you go, Peter, um, does the platform allow pre market trading? Unfortunately, no. Okay. But now that point of uh, pending order is what usually solves that issue. Because the reason as to why you will not buy the stock today and you would want to buy tomorrow or next week is because you feel as if the prices at the moment are a bit expensive. I'll give you an example. If you are to buy a Christmas tree, you'd rather buy that Christmas tree by end of October, latest. If you are to buy a Christmas tree, let's say come December 15th, all the way to 25th, you buy it expensive. So sometimes uh, investors will not want to buy a certain company because they feel maybe the company is still expensive. That's why they will say, for example, a pre-market trading. So you solve that using a pending order because a pending order, you have already done the analysis and you know this stock is likely maybe to fall up to this level. So you can even put a pending order today and that pending order is actually executed next week, let's say Tuesday or Wednesday. So for pre-market, for example, before the exchange is opened, it's not allowed until maybe the exchange is open if you want to execute direct trades in the market. All right. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us today. Um, I think we have learned. Um, we will keep having this, so we'll keep reaching out to you. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, everyone. You can you feel free to leave the meeting. For those who joined us on Facebook, Asante Nipia. Uh, if you hadn't registered, please share your email so that we, can, we are able to share the presentation with you. Asante. 